But what I'm getting from you is one really doesn't want to use home anymore. Correct. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> well, yeah, that's funny. You know, it's a whole yeah. generation. Of yeah. I resisted buying new stones because I was raised with old stones. So yeah. I've just been trying to figure out what, you know, what it is. But, but if you were buying stones and you, you would just go with the shop. Yes. Yeah. It's the only stone I would. And you, you buy a range of grits uh, if you were dressing up your axe after filing it, there would be a range for that. You wouldn't use your finished stone for that. Right. Right. No, you would, uh, generally, anything that you're trying to pair wood with, so a plain iron, a chisel, a slick, those things you would all take right up to the highest grit that you have. <coughs> Would the grit sandpaper to dress a an also? I would go to the to the very to super coarse, you know, 80 grit if you can find it. Um, you're trying to remove material. And as long as you keep it flat, it doesn't matter what you do. Right. Right. Okay. So your plan would be to dress an oil stone with uh, 80 grit wet dry. Right. Type. Right. I have an old one. I do too. Many. <laughs> and, and you're going to just work it. Right. But don't use water. Right. It's, you can just, the, the oil that's in the stone will be able to get use that. It. Those stones, they, all of your oil stones that they've never been used are soaked right to the core of the oil. What would you suggest he used to clean the pitch off of that plane that he's got? Um, there are... Would the camellia oil take it off or no? It wouldn't take it off, no, but, but if the, if, if uh, what I didn't do with that plane is take it apart and put camellia oil in there. If you can keep a surface a little bit greasy or a little bit oily, the pitch doesn't tend to stick to it. Um, but turpentine will remove it, diesel fuel will remove it, there are some citrus cleaners available that will remove pitch. Yep. They, they all do it. Some are just much more quicker. Gasoline would remove it. Um, and then there are some proprietary things that you can buy that you know, are made specifically for removing my pitch. Do you sell some very clean plants here? Why we, we do. The, the number one bench plane is an absurdly small plane. I don't know if we have any, but we have in the past. But then we have a couple of other really small. I'm not sure who uh, the plots. Well, the violin makers use them. They use tiny plates, yes. With, exactly. with a curved blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They scoop out. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, planes are an amazing tool. First, it, what, what I find most amazing about the plane is that it really hasn't changed. The very first plane that we have official record of was um, roughly from 79 AD. It was found in the ashes at Pompeii. And it was a, it was a, a, a copper body plane with wood infill. The wood is all gone. And so, you know, just, just this outside layer was the, the copper um, portion. And then everything else inside there, including what held the plane iron, was, was wood. The, the plane iron was wedged in place. <laughs> That's where you got the inspiration. Yep. He went to Bob But it, but it, it looked just like this. You know, but there is no, there has been. The changes that have taken place to the plane are so subtle. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I just need a toy. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 What's so ironic about planes not being used anymore today is that any, any, anyone who, you know, even a ridiculously unskilled woodworker can, can do the most demanding and, and, uh, and of all the tools, the plane is the one that, that should really have survived. There's, there's quite a resurgence in the popularity of the plane. 
but still, still losing out to the power to win. Was it Stanley who reissued the <laughs> number of their older line? Yeah, four of their <coughs> the, uh, under the sweetheart. Sweetheart name, which was named after uh, or got start after this fellow Hart that used to work. Uh, he was the president of the company for many, many years. And when he left, they came out with this the stand, SW Stanley Works and put the heart around it. Oh, yeah. this, this so, yes, they reintroduced them. And they have, they have some interesting innovation in some of the tools. Like this adjustment, you know, this lateral adjustment, this is, this is also a, it does two things. It moves the planer back and forth, but you can also pivot it like this to, uh, to make a lateral adjustment. It has an adjustable throat, and there's some nice features to it. It has a fantastic hat on that stick. And it has a very thick uh, planer. The, what, one, one thing that's a little awkward about that is that to lock the lateral adjustment in, there's an Allen wrench and an Allen nut on the side, so I just don't bother locking it in. You know, if I'm careful using it, you don't knock that handle very much. But to have to carry an Allen wrench with you would not be, you know, no one's going to do that. It's a heavy, it's substantial, isn't it? Yeah. You don't carry that in your paper. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you have described some different uh, ways to fine tune an iron. Do you have one iron per plane, or do you swap them out? I I just have one iron per plane. No. And I I mean I have, as you can see, a number of different planes for different purposes. The one I do think that a block plane. Number three or number four bench plane are pretty general purpose planes. So I'll, I like the heft of this for planing across the end grain. So while it doesn't, the bed angle is not great for that, sometimes I'll use it for that mm -hmm. purpose just because it's easy to hold. You know, there are two handles. The block plane is pretty much a one handed operation. And in some heavy end planing applications, it's very frustrating to, to use it. Um, this is uh, Lee Nielsen's number 10 and quarter. It's based on the old Stanley 10 and quarter. It is a, um, the, the plain iron is exactly as wide as the plain box. You could use this for a data weight operation. Um, <clears throat> but what I like to use it for, the, the handles pivot. So you can loosen the screws and you can tip, tilt the handles off to the left or to the right. So I use this for planing right up against the shoulder of a tenon. Either direction. So, from planing the flat part of the tendon, and then I can pivot it up, tilt the handles the other way, and, and lay this edge flat on the cheek of the tendon and plane the shoulder of the tendon. Additionally, it has these two nice um, knickers on the side. So, put a screw in here, and you can drop this knicker down, and it slices the wood right at the intersection of the shoulder and the cheek of the tendon. It makes just a beautifully crisp cut. Gives you a nice square um, edge that's dead flat. This is a chisel plane for getting right into you know, the corner of a box, for instance. As the plane iron is located right on the front edge, as you can see. Don't use that a lot, I'm afraid. <laughs> you have mentioned, uh, I think, earlier. Going to be playing part when you may want to put a back chamfer. Yes, back pedal. Back pedal, rather. Yeah. How do you gauge the angle of that, and do you take it away, or do you, do you just leave it on the on the iron, whether you're using softwood or hardwood? Um. Oh, okay. So there are a number of questions there. How do you put it on? Um, that I, I think a lot of people just freehand that because it's not a sharpening operation. It's just a, you're yeah. creating um, a shape on the blade. 